To continue my investigation of the new Spike 3 software, LEGO announced that there were changes made to the gyro. I wanted to look into what these changes were. But before we begin, I first want to explain two major issues in the Spike 2 or Spike Legacy software with the gyro sensor. Here's an example using Spike 2 where I turned on the hub when it was completely still. As you can see, the gyro is still drifting. This can be really frustrating for teams trying to use the gyro either for their turns or for trying to drive straight. Now let's see what happens when I run code alongside reading the gyro sensor. This seems to introduce a significant amount of drift that wasn't present before running the program. Now let's try running another program. This drift carries over when I start running a different program as well. Now let's take a look at another test where I manually turn the hub 360 degrees and look at the gyro values. After doing an exact 360 degree turn, you can see that the yaw angle is now 4 degrees off. Now let's try this with a different hub and see if we can experience the same issue. When turning this hub 360 degrees, I get an error of 13 degrees. It turns out that this error between hubs is very inconsistent, ranging anywhere from 1 degree up to the 13 degrees that you see here in the hubs that I tested. Now that we understand what these two issues of drift and inaccuracy were in the Spike 2 software, let's see if anything has changed in the Spike 3 software. First, let's see if the gyro drift issue is still present. I was not able to replicate the same level of drift that I was with the Spike 2 software. There was only about 3 degrees of drift after 2 minutes. Now let's try turning the hub 360 degrees to see how much error there is. Unfortunately, I seem to experience the same amount of error that I did using the Spike 2 software. However, within a hub, this error seems to be consistent and linear, so you may be able to account for it in some way. So it seems like the issue of gyro drift has been addressed in the Spike 3 software, but the inaccuracy is still present. I'm glad that LEGO has started to address some of these problems with the gyro, and I hope that in the future teams will start being able to use the gyro more successfully. Well that's all for this video, I hope it helped you understand more about the issues with the gyro and what has changed between Spike 2 and Spike 3.